I'm walking right into Germany. You know who also walked into Germany back in 1939? The French. Exactly. I get many viewers who ask me, Stefan, why didn't the French attack Germany once they declared war on Germany September 1939 after Germany had invaded Poland? Well, they did. What? Yes, this here is the forgotten French invasion of Germany that took place in September 1939 and is also known as the Tsar Offensive. Good to have you back on the channel and if you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location and I'm now on location in a German village I honestly already forgot the name of. And is this location so historically significant? Well, not that much, although the French did capture this village in September 1939. I'd like to cover the lesser known aspects of the Second World War if you find that interesting as well and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and also hit that notification bell. When Hitler rose to power in 1933, tensions in Europe also rose in the following years. Great Britain and France weren't too keen on going to war with Germany again. Although they had proclaimed victory in 1918, the Great War left a scar on these nations because of the horrendous losses. Unlike the First World War, there was almost no war enthusiasm before the outbreak of the Second World War. Hitler was granted the Sudetenland in 1938. In the following year, he took over the remaining Czech lands as Slovakia became a Nazi puppet state. The Allies pledged that if Germany attacked Poland, they would declare war on Germany. And on the 1st of September 1939, Germany did invade Poland. And when Germany refused to pull back its troops, the British and the French declared war on Germany. Neither France nor Britain was prepared for war, not on a material level, not on a mental level. Yet. On the 7th of September 1939, the French did invade Germany. The Tsar Offensive had begun. Let's take a look at the French army of that time. It was pretty much an army of the First World War. In appearance, the French 1939 uniform was almost identical to that of 1918, except for the color, but also in tactics. The French relied on static defense and decentralization of armored strength over infantry divisions. Iconic was the construction of the Maginot Line, a line of concrete fortifications built in the 1930s to deter a future German attack. Compared to 1918, the French did have newer tanks such as the Char B1 Bis tank. On the 26th of August 1939, the French army mobilized. French chief of army staff Maurice Gamelin did have a plan for if war would break out. Since most of Germany's forces were fighting in Poland, its western frontier was less defended. The Saarland was defended by the German First Army, led by Erin von Witzleben. After the First World War, the German Saarland was occupied by the French forces and given back only in 1935. The advantage the French had was that they therefore knew the area well. What they knew less was that 90% of the German air force was fighting in the Polish campaign. Because of this, the Allies did not resort to the bombing of German cities as they feared German retaliation strikes. On the 8th of September 1939, the French moved into the Tsarland. The French invasion of Germany had begun. It started with reconnaissance units and shortly after, the infantry units moved in as well. On a 20 mile front, 11 French divisions moved in. They advanced toward the city of Zabrücken and you can see here on this map the areas the French took. These are basically these German salients that could be attacked from three different sides. German opposition was weak and it turned out that a lot of these areas had already been evacuated by the Germans. The French captured the Warren Forest and some of their tanks were knocked out due to German anti-tank mines. The Germans had mined the area to slow down the French advance. 
The German fire against these tanks was very ineffective, yet the French tanks didn't push through. And why was this? Well, they were afraid of the German panzers. But as it turned out, the German panzers weren't anywhere near since the German panzers were advancing into Poland in the east. The French nevertheless were very cautious and they overestimated their enemy. By the 12th of September, the French had captured a dozen of towns and villages, among which the village I'm in right now. The French then advanced to the German main line of defense. I'm talking about the Siegfried line. They pounded this line with their artillery without much success. Around that time, the British and French leaders came together to discuss what to do. It seemed that Poland's demise was imminent and the French and the British, they agreed that they would follow up their offensive one week later. However, Poland's demise was hastened by the Soviet attack on Poland from the east. That happened on the 17th of September according to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact where Nazi Germany and the USSR had agreed to carve up the Second Polish Republic. When that happened, the French troops started to withdraw. In some smaller areas, the French dug in. Mid-October, Hitler had transferred his units from the east to the west and he counter-attacked. And the remaining French forces were driven out. The Tsar offensive was over. The French suffered 2,000 casualties. The Germans had almost 200 killed in action and 400 men wounded in action. After this French attack, the so-called Phony War started, although some historians agree that the Tsar Offensive was part of the Phony War, where basically the French and the British were in war with Germany, but neither side was attacking one another. Eventually, the Germans launched their attack in May 1940 and captured the Benelux countries and France. With hindsight, perhaps the French should have put more effort into their Tsar offensive. And perhaps it would have been successful. The German commander Alfred Jodl later stated, If we did not collapse already in the year 1939, that was due only to the fact that during the Polish campaign, the approximately 110 French and British divisions in the West were held completely inactive against the 23 German divisions. Another German general claimed that if the French would have attacked en masse, they could hold out for maximum two weeks and therefore the second world war could have been ended as early as 1939. This attack has led to countless what-if speculations. The French and the British lacked the resolve and will to carry out a full-scale invasion of Germany. The French ineffective deployment hindered such an operation. A big thanks to my patrons, you see their names right here. If you'd like to support me, please go to my Patreon or PayPal page, the links are in the description. If you'd like to learn more about the German invasion of the Netherlands and the invasion of Belgium, you can click right here. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. And best wishes from a German village in the Tsarland. Auf Wiedersehen!